Kevin here for Tailhunter Sport Fishing, and it's time once again for the Mexican Minute La Paz Video Fishing Report, covering all of the fishing action for our Tailhunter Sport Fishing Fleet in La Paz, Baja, Mexico. Appreciate you all checking in. Thanks for spending time with us. Hope you're doing well, and if you like what we're doing, please give us a thumbs up, a like, and don't forget to subscribe. This is going to cover all of the fishing action for our Tailhunter Sport Fishing Fleet for the dates of, let me see, the 31st of October through the 11th of November. 2023. Listen, sorry for taking so long. You know, we've been doing these for, gosh, almost 30 years, and I really have to apologize to you. Normally, I try to do these every week, try to get it out to get you the latest and greatest information or worst information, whatever the case may be. Uh, the last two weeks have been kind of hectic. I might, I might have explained to you in my last report that uh, I had surgery. I had a full knee replacement surgery, which was just about a week ago, and uh, they're absolutely right about what they said. The surgery is no big deal. After the surgery, it's a different story. The physical therapy. Uh, I'm on about eight happy drugs, so I'm a little groggy, a little wonky. My throat's a little messed up. Uh, it's, it hurts. Uh, and they, my doctor even said that for the first three or four weeks, I'm going to wish that I had not done it. But thanks to the happy drugs, thank you uh, to my wife, Jill, who's just been on top of everything and taking care of me and making sure I take... Uh, those drugs every two hours, making sure I'm fed, making sure I've got ice around my knee. And especially to all of you who sent in cards, letters, emails. I'm sorry I'm not able to answer everybody's uh, phone calls, but thank you so much. I really appreciate all the good thoughts and the prayers. Uh, I'm supposed to be better on the uh, other side of this. They say it's going to take somewhere from one month to four months for me to get back, but I will be back and will be better and grander than ever. Also, the other thing that happened, well, in the last couple of weeks, uh, we had a couple things happen. Let's see, we had two hurricanes. Uh, the front of our tail hunter restaurant got torn off, so we were closed. Uh, no water or power for about five or six days, which makes it a little hard to do cleanup when you have no water or power. Uh, we also had to move out of our uh, older place where we had been living on the Malacan. We moved back to our new place, had to do a bunch of repairs, fix the walls, uh, sewage, all that kind of stuff, and then pack up for the season because the season's pretty much over. And that's the real story here. Uh, even though I haven't been on every week or I, I missed a week and we're a little bit uh, late in the uh, fish report this week, there hasn't been a lot to tell you. Most of the last couple, I'd say eight to ten days have been cleanup. Uh, the bay was a mess. It continues to be a mess. Most of the marinas in town really took some heavy destruction. Uh, it was really bad. I, I heard something like over 50 boats were sunk or damaged. There were boats washed up on the beach. And if you look at this picture I have right here, Take a look at that. That is the small craft marina where we keep most of our pongas. That's what's left of it. And there's also what you can't see is a bunch of sunken boats out there. We're not able to launch any boats out of there because, well, the ramp got destroyed by the hurricane, which was a lot stronger than a lot of folks predicted. When it hit us, it was about a Category 2, winds over 100 miles an hour. And the big thing about it was it sat on us for three days. Most most uh, hurricanes that we have, storms that pass through, you know, they can be a lot stronger. But they're through in about four, five, six, eight hours. This one sat on us for three days and just battered us and battered us and battered us. And it really sort of tore up the town. Up until about 10 days, many people still did not have uh, power. They did not have drinking water. Roads were torn up. Uh, as I said, our own Tailhunter restaurant, the front of it was completely gone. So we've got the work crews working on that, hopefully rebuild the Palapa and get things open again. And... Uh, Mostly it's been us cleaning up, the city cleaning up, and then Mother Nature itself. Uh, she's trying to clean up as well. The waters are really torn up, really dirty, very muddy, lots of debris in the water, lots of trash in the water. And normally that takes a little while for it to clean up. But on top of that, the seasons are changing. So we've got northern winds that have started. And this is what happens between November and April, as I often say. It's off-season. It's not a real good time to be out. There are some good days, but there can be a lot of bad days. I'd say, you know, last winter, 70% of the days were too windy, too rough for anyone to be out there. And it gets so rough sometimes that the port captain shuts things down. And he's done that a couple times in the last couple of uh, uh, days or so. It's been that windy. The northern winds are, have finally started, and they're really making everything very, very turbulent. And that makes it hard for the waters to clean up. Uh, albeit uh, that we had from the hurricane. So it's taken a little while for our La Paz areas to get cleaned up, but we are still finding some fish with our tail hunter Las Arenas fleet. Now, if you're not familiar with the area, we drive about an hour, we pick you up in our shuttles, drive you to an hour to Bahia de los Muertos, and we launch off the beach there. We couldn't do it for a while because the beach was so torn up, was nothing but rocks. There was no way for us to launch the pongas. Well, we did have a couple boats go out, and I will tell you that there are some Dorado out there. There's some Dorado, 
Um, we have sailfish, <clears throat> some pargo, cabrilla, excuse me, uh, a couple of other stray, you know, bonita and, and uh, species like that. But for the most part, uh, there aren't that many fishermen out. Uh, we've gone from maybe 20 to 40 fishermen a day to, well, in the last two weeks, I've had a total of four. And then let's see, the next week coming up, I've got two fishing. And that's pretty much it for the rest of the year, unless somebody makes a last minute booking. And most of the folks who come down this time of year, they're snowbirds. They're looking to get away from uh, the cold that it's up in Canada or Alaska or other places in the world. And they come down and look for a little bit of sunshine, which we do have. It is sunny, but it is getting cooler, and many times you really shouldn't be out on the water. So not many folks coming down uh, for fishing, although right now we're going to see that big, big influx of windsurfers coming to the La Paz area because La Paz is known as one of the world-class windsurfing and kiteboarding sites in the world. We have world-class winds, and while it's great for the wind uh, windsurfers and kiteboarders, eh, not so great to be out there fishing. So really not much to tell you. Uh, as far as fishing is concerned, like I said, I do have a couple people going fishing in a couple days, but and there are fish out there. It's just that it's very, very difficult to be on the water, number one. Number two, uh, because it's so rough out there and because the waters have been so dirty, it's very hard to find live bait. And uh, some of the areas you just can't get through. If it's too rough, we can't get over across the channel to the islands. We can't get to some of the other remote or further away places that may be holding fish. So the fishing is restricted to sort of only certain areas where the wind uh, is not so uh, strong as in other areas. Anyway, uh, that's going to do it real quick. I'm sorry it's short. My voice is a little bit shot. Uh, I'm a little bit uh, groggy right now as well. I just took some medications. And uh, otherwise, I'm doing good. Recovery's on its way. Thank you, everyone who checked in and sent me uh, emails and cards, all the phone calls and good wishes and prayers, and especially to my wife, Jill, who's just been 24-7 taking care of me and making sure I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So uh, thank you very much. I'm Jonathan for the Mexican Minute. You take care. God bless. Take care of each other, and we'll try our best to catch you next week.